every now and then on the channel, I'll get a few comments saying, yeah, like the, the deck list videos are great, but what if I want to create a deck for myself just from scratch? How do I do that? And so, um, let's do a video on that. So this video is assuming that you already know how to play the Pokemon TCG. So the first thing you need to decide is what are the parameters for this deck I'm about to build? What type of format? What series of cards are you going to include? As you know from the channel, formats and cards rotate. Rules can change per format. And so if you are confused about that, here's some resources to check out other than my own channel. The first of which is the Jason Klazinski blog. He's one of the greatest Pokemon players of all time. And on his blog, he chronicles the history of the TCG and goes through a lot of the major cards, a lot of the major deck art types and play styles of the time. He even provides sample deck lists for a lot of the decks he talks about. And so it's a great resource to kind of get into the mindset of a player through each of these different formats. And that's really informative for building a deck and figuring out what cards you like and want to use. The second resource is the Poke Gym Research Tower. If you go to their unlimited setting, you can basically look at every single individual card from every set that's released. And so if you're new to the Pokemon TCG or if you're new to just the vintage sets maybe, you can go in here and just look and read at every single individual card, figure out which ones are appealing to you, which ones you might want to use, see what each card does, and that's going to allow you to start formulating a strategy, start thinking about what type of deck you want to run. Or maybe you're a longtime collector that's already familiar with the cards, and so in that case, just pull out that binder, start flipping through pages, and try to figure out what cards jump out at you, which ones seem interesting, or maybe you're just looking to build something that wasn't in net decking. Like, say you see this Magneton and you say, Huh, I've always really liked this card. I've always found the art really interesting. I wonder what it actually does. And so you read the attacks and see like, Oh, Self-Destruct's actually pretty powerful and it's basically a suicide move. That's kind of interesting. Maybe I can try this one. So for the sake of an example, we'll just say that you've narrowed down your deck building to the base fossil format and you have chosen to use Fossil Magneton as your lead Pokemon in your deck. So you start building from there. You got your Magneton, you're gonna need Magnemite to evolve up into them. So what now? Well, you gotta look for some more Pokemon that can kind of fit the play style that can partner well with that Magneton. So maybe flip back through your binder See what you got going on. You got an Electrode. That's another electric type. That way you can use the same type of energy. Or maybe, uh, you know, there's another Electrode back in base set. Maybe that one will do a little bit better. So let's go ahead and pull out a couple of these Electrode. It's got an interesting Pokemon power that can accelerate energy, which would be good for self-destruct. Big four energy attack. So we'll give Electrode a shot as a partner to Magneton. So we'll get a couple of those. With Electrode, you're also going to need a couple of Voltorb to evolve into the Electrode. But six basic Pokemon isn't really enough. You maybe need another Pokemon that has attacks that don't cost three or four energy like your Electrodes and Magneton. So Electabuzz would probably work really well. And it's also a lightning type, electric type card. So you're not going to have to add any new types of energy. Because of the cost of self-destruct, it probably has to be an all electric deck anyway. With the Pokemon chosen, that is 16 cards for your 60 card deck already chosen for you. You've chosen a couple of cards that have synergy with one another, a little bit of energy acceleration. Like I said, with that Magneton, with an attack that costs four lightning energy, you're pretty much going to have to make the entire deck an electric deck. And so Electrode and Electabuzz are great partner Pokemon that have great synergy. And then you also have some low cost attacks and some high cost attacks for early game and late game. And this is essentially what you'll do with any deck you wanna build. You'll start with your core cards and you'll work out from there. So you'll say, well, what other Pokemon will support this Pokemon I've chosen well? And the next step is to say, which trainer cards will support the Pokemon that I've chosen? So since we've chosen the base fossil format for the basis of our Magneton Electrode Electabuzz deck, that means we get the base fossil set of trainers. I like to keep just a few play sets of all the big important trainers around. That way I can just breeze through them whenever I'm deck building and be like, okay, yeah, play set of Bill would be good for draw power. What else we got? You know, Professor Oak could take some of those. That's a maybe. 
uh, because we will be editing this down later. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be using four oaks. We'll throw in a, a playset of energy removal, maybe potion, but also you're self-destructing and knocking yourself out, so you wouldn't be able to really use potion. Gust of Wind's going to be useful for pulling out Pokemon you want to deal that 100 damage to. Switch is also going to be pretty important because if you think back to your Pokemon, Magneton's got an, a retreat cost of 2, Electabuzz retreat cost of 2, so yeah, Switch is probably a good idea. We'll throw down a play set of those. And remember, even if you don't have any of these physical cards, you can still go through the research tower and kind of see what all the trainers do. And as you're cycling through different trainer cards, you'll be crafting that mental strategy and thinking, what trainer cards are going to actually support what I'm wanting to do with the Pokemon in this deck, like Defender? Because Defender has a ruling on it that it's actually going to reduce self damage too. So the wording on Magneton says you're going to be dealing 100 damage to yourself. So if you've got a couple of Defenders on there, you may actually survive. And then that's also going to reduce damage incoming on your opponent's turn. So that'd be a really great way to turn the tables. You just have to keep your strategy in mind. And with that mention of the Defender ruling, I will hook you up with another great resource, and that is the Wizards of the Coast ruling compendium. So if you ever have a question about how card effects interact, or if there's certain wording that's confusing, you can always reference this compendium. For this case, for Defender, we'll jump down to the Trainer section, scroll on down to the Defender rulings, and actually take a look at what the official rulings are for Defender and self-damage as well as, you know, da damage coming from different sources. That way, with every card that you're adding to your deck, you know exactly how it can be used in all situations. Of course, that Wizards of the Coast compendium only applies to Wizards of the Coast format, so you're looking at anything between Base Set and Sky Ridge. And there are certain mistakes in there, but for the most part, it is a pretty great resource. So if you are confused or uncertain about something, you can always just Google search it or get on the channel. Ask down in the comments under a deck that's using certain cards that you like. For later formats, there are other resources you can jump into, like the Pokemon official website. Once the Pokemon company took over the TCG, it became a lot easier to get access to rulings through their official website. But back to the example of this Magneton deck we're building. When you're picking trainers for your deck, it may seem like, oh yeah, like Oak is a great way to get new cards in my hand. I can get those Magnetons and those Electrodes faster. But you can't have a full playset of every trainer, even if it's useful. That's where you're going to be editing yourself a little bit. You'll want to prioritize the trainer cards that inform your strategy. You always have to keep that strategy in mind. And so with Magneton, your strategy is going to be get four energy cards onto Magneton, use self-destruct, uh, hopefully knock out the opposing Pokemon and also knock out yourself, but that can be prevented if you put at least two Defender cards on top of Magneton before you self-destruct. And so you might start to realize that maybe it's more important to put the Defenders in there than Oaks. And so as you edit down your deck, you may take out and say like, oh, well, you know, I'm only using like two or three Gusts per match, so I'll take a Gust of Wind out. And, you know, I don't want to deck myself out too much, so I'll only include two copies of Oak. That way I can keep in that full playset of Defenders and plus power. That way I'm dealing maximum damage to my opponent, minimum damage to myself, which is really going to help out this deck. Once you've done a bit of editing, you'll want to check the balance of your deck. And so, you know, this is the amount of Pokemon we have in the deck. This is the amount of trainers, you know, quite a bit more, but it is base fossil, so that's kind of normal. And then the energy is a little lighter. With as many trainers as we pick, there's not a whole lot of room for energy. You got to remember Magneton, that attack needs four lightning energy. So will we actually have enough in this deck? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that is by playtesting the deck. Before I get into playtesting, I do want to take a minute to speak about net decking. Net decking is basically just going online, finding a deck list, and then putting together that exact deck list and playing with it. And there's nothing wrong with that. My channel is basically a net decking resource, much like the Jason Klazinski blog I mentioned earlier. But the problem with net decking is just looking at a deck list doesn't always convey the strategy of a deck. 
Just by having all of the cards in the deck doesn't mean you know how they're supposed to interact and how to actually play the deck strategically. Sometimes that is the case. Sometimes you can just put the cards together and play and it works perfectly. But when you're building your own deck from scratch, you're choosing each individual card in there. You know why that card's in there, what it's supposed to be doing, what other cards it's supposed to be interacting with. That's why I think if you're new to a certain format or if you're new to the TCG in general, it's important to build your own deck. That way you're understanding each part of the process as you're creating it. Now, if you're a very experienced player or if you've been playing within a format a lot, then net decking can be another great resource. So if you are looking for highly competitive decks to deck build around, then I would recommend pokeplayer.com. If you go to their archives, they've actually got tournament data on a lot of different decks. So if we go into Base Fossil, for example, you can see all of the different types of decks that made up the metagame. You can go into Haymaker, see all the different Haymaker decks that had tournament placing. Click on specific ones and it's gonna give you a full deck list that you can work from. It's even got a nice little toolbar where you can just click on each card and it's gonna pull up that card just in case you're not familiar with it. And this is basically the best resource I have for net decking since it is tournament level competitive decks. And when you're getting ready to play test the deck, if you don't own all of the cards yet, don't worry about it. You're not at a tournament, it doesn't matter. Use proxies. If you are needing a Blast Toys to play test a deck, but you don't have a Blast Toys, just take some random ass energy card and write Blast Toys on it. As long as you have a reference for what it does, it doesn't matter. I've had quite a few people comment under videos saying, I bought the cards for this deck and it doesn't run the way you say. It's like, well, man, you should have just play tested. I don't know why you would buy cards without play testing the deck, but don't buy expensive cards until after you've play tested the deck and know that you want to use them. So the first thing you want to do to play test a deck after you've built it is to just shuffle it up and draw a few hands. That way you know how you're going to be starting your games. Don't worry about getting a full setup yet. Just draw your seven cards, look at them. You know, like that's a decent starting hand. Um, you know, just do it a few more times and make sure that the start of your game is going to go the way you want it. That you don't need to edit your deck before you even start laying prizes or getting set up against opponents. So we'll draw another hand here. This one, not very good. No basic Pokemon there, so you can't really start the game. And you'll just keep doing this over and over. This is also gonna help you get a feel for basically how the cards are dispersed in your deck. Earlier I was talking about finding that balance between your Pokemon, trainers, and energy. From these draws, it's looking like maybe I've got a few too many trainer cards in here. I even did a top draw to make sure I didn't have a Pokemon on there. Too many trainers. So you do some editing, you keep drawing opening hands to make sure you get some good ones, and once you've got that balance and you're comfortable with the deck, that's when you'll set up an actual start and kind of play an imaginary game against yourself. Just kind of see how your deck's running, what your top draws are gonna be, making sure you're getting at least one energy per turn, making sure you're getting trainers at the rate in which you'll actually need them. Just overall making sure that your deck's running smoothly and that you'll be able to get the proper setup that you need when you need it. As you continue to edit your deck and perfect the flow of your deck, start playing against other decks and just see how yours stacks up. If you can, I highly suggest playing mirror matches because that's gonna give you your opponent's perspective on what it's like to play your deck, which will better help you understand where your deck's strengths and weaknesses are, where its vulnerabilities are, and how your opponent's gonna be choosing to make plays against it. That way, you can protect against those plays and that makes you a better player. Between matches, you'll continue to edit your deck and maybe find that certain cards, like Base Set Electrode, aren't really helping your strategy as much as you thought. So maybe let's try that Jungle Electrode and see how the deck runs differently with that replacement made. Always be editing yourself. As you continue to play and edit your deck, you're going to optimize how your deck runs. You'll discover new strategies, new things that different combos of cards can accomplish together. And, you know, at the end of the day, you may find that you don't even like the Magneton anymore. Maybe you want to focus more on the Electabuzz and the Electrode of the deck. It's really just a process of discovering 
what your play style is, how you prefer to play, and what your preferred cards are, which could lead to complete deck overhauls. And, you know, again, there's nothing wrong with that. That's just part of the process. As you play against more and more decks, you'll find certain strengths and weaknesses your deck has. In the example I gave with the Magneton deck, every card in there is weak to fighting type. And so you may keep running into Hitmonchans that just completely destroy your deck from the get-go. So you may want to add in some counter cards like a Scyther or a Dodrio that actually resists fighting type. That way you're covering one of your weaknesses. You may also be adding in cards known as Techs, which are cards that don't directly inform your own strategy, but instead prevent competitive counter strategies. So say for instance, um, with this Magneton deck, you're having trouble with fighting types. So you want to include a psychic type that can counter fighting type decks. And so you want to throw in a Mr. Mime. And not only is this going to help counter fighting types, it's also going to help you stall against certain decks so that you can load up lightning energy onto magnetons but that also means you're going to have to start adding psychic type energy to your deck and so all of a sudden you have a psychic electric deck instead of a pure monotype deck and so that's kind of the nature of deck sometimes it can change the entire way the deck is played the the real definition of a tech is kind of up in the air i may just do a completely different video on that in the future so let me know if you would like to know more about techs once you've play tested a whole bunch and gotten your deck exactly where you want it now would be the time to actually buy those cards if you do want to physically own them but if you've been playtesting on tcg1.net then you won't have to worry about it anyway that's a fully digital gameplay service i personally don't really like the interface for that site but if you're really wanting to play the game and you don't want to have to spend any money tcg1.net is a great way to play for free or even play test for free before you do spend money on cards I'll place a link for that site down in the description along with every other resource I've talked about in this video. That way you have direct links to all of these deck building resources. Down in the description you can also find links to all of my social media where you can hit me up on there, ask questions, give comments, and uh, go ahead and leave a like and a comment down on this video. And uh, I hope it really helped the people that were requesting a deck building tips video. Until next time guys, bye.